Hello everyone and welcome to Archaeobiking. Today is uh, the second video um, I've decided to do uh, in lieu of uh, recent events and decisions within the U.S. government, um, specifically on that of the subject of abortion. Uh, because one of the major comments uh, by people, especially in my country's government, the U.S., uh, has been that abortion is not part of the, uh, well, specifically the history of the U.S. itself, and I'll get into that in this uh, as well, but uh, abortion being essentially a historical uh, throughout the world. So the question now lies, is that true? And this is what that video is here to answer. Uh, the video being titled, An Archaeologist's History of Abortion Practices Throughout the World. So, is there are abortion practices historical, and how common were they? Well, yes, um, and uh, a bit of a mix in terms of how common. So, first of all, everyone knows what abortion is, you know, Planned Parenthood, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, one of the <laughs> most, if not the most um, debated and controversial to uh, topics within uh most nations, uh, specifically America, but other countries as well. Uh, and often, um, as I said a moment ago, uh, especially evangelicals um, in the U.S., they state that it's uh, not only is it not historical, but uh, it is against the Christian religion. Well, <laughs> um, uh, let's let's take a look at that. So first of all, um, abortion practices actually go uh, back thousands of years, um, and in case and in civilizations such as Egypt, the Egyptian Empire, um, and the Babylonian uh, city states, as well as in um, the uh, kingdoms of uh, Israel and Judah, uh, abortion practices were actually legal, um, and there were many different drugs you could take. Um, and in fact, according to uh, Hammurabi's code, you would only be fined if it was a violent abortion, as if somebody, um, you know, hit a woman uh, in violence and caused a miscarriage of some sort. Otherwise, uh, nothing would really happen. And in fact, we can actually see this uh, similar law um, play out in the kingdom of Judah here in the kingdom of Israel. Um, because actually in the Old Testament, as stated by Exodus, Exodus um, 21, 22, and Exodus 21, 23, <clears throat> uh, basically what happens if two men are fighting and they cause injury to a woman who is pregnant, uh, the loss of a child only incurs a uh, fine. Meanwhile, the loss of the woman's life um, is to be taken by execution. So in other words, if you kill a woman, you're to be executed, but if you kill uh, an unborn child, um, you just get fined, uh, which again, you know, tracks with what we know about what uh, is within um, the Babylonian kingdoms uh, and the Egyptian kingdoms as well as uh, Canaan. Um, and by the way, I'm not going to, in my sources cite uh, the Bible, everyone knows what the Bible is and can pick up one and find Exodus 21, 22, and 21, 23. Um, it's the only source I'm not going to cite. Anyways, <clears throat> however, um, it should also be noted, despite the acceptance of abortion and the importance of the woman over the unborn child that is seen in uh, Babylon, Egypt, and Canaan, and Israel, and Judah, uh, kingdoms such as Assyria uh, actually saw the opposite. Um, you were not to have an abortion at all, period. Um, so it's, it's interesting that, uh, <laughs> that four out of five of the major ancient regions in the Near East, including the Jewish people, who to this day uh, have an, a belief of um, abortion so long as it's uh, to protect the health of the mother, um, believed that the mother was more important than the child, whereas Assyria believed the opposite, where it was 
the child was more important than the mother. Um, similarly, uh, the Persian Empire held the exact same uh, belief. Uh, being Zoroastrian, uh, Zoroastrianism believes all life is sacred. Uh, so therefore, um, to take the life of an unborn infant is the same as killing somebody in battle or in murder or what have you. Of course, in bat killing somebody in battle or via execution was uh, believed as righteous, but murder uh, was not, and that's where the uh, killing of an unborn fetus was seen as. Um, however, uh, the Hellenistic kingdoms of Greece um, saw it as the opposite. They also believed, so one, you know, it was okay, uh, you know, in cases of adultery and uh, things like that, uh, or if the husband didn't want the child, um, as well as in, you know, protecting of the health of the mother. And this is, is a practice that goes on uh, back to um, early Greece, but it's uh, most well known from the Hellenistic period or the period after the uh, breakup of Alexander the Great's uh, empire into the Seleucid Empire, the Antigone Empire, which was eventually taken over by the Seleucids, um, and the Ptolemaic Empire, etc. Um, in fact, Aristotle himself has uh, various uh, mentions of drugs uh, and herbs that you can use uh, in these. Uh, and this idea would continue on to the Roman Empire, where, uh, again, it was seen as okay so long as it was not a violent abortion, or, in, you know, again, if you hit somebody or etc., um, so long as the woman and the husband decided or in the health of the mother, etc. So very clearly we see this uh, in the ancient world that uh, for the most part, with the exception of the Assyrian and Persian empires, abortion was uh, viewed as um, very, maybe not morally right, but it was acceptable. Um, it was still considered, you know, oh no, they had to do this, um, but they did accept it and it was no, by no means illegal uh, for the most part. Um, but, you know, that's the ancient world. Uh, you know, the ancient world is obviously very different uh, than even the medieval world and the world today. So what about medieval Europe? Well, um, we know from the laws of the various excuse me, successor states to the Roman Empire that were founded by the Germanic tribes uh, that there were actually various laws about abortion. Um, the Visigothic Kingdom uh, was again the um, exception to the rule. They, regardless of the of the um, scenario, uh, brutally uh, outlawed uh, abortion. They were very strict about it, um, whether it was a violent abortion or an abortion that the couple decided on or what have you. Um, it was illegal. In contrast the uh, kingdoms, uh, other Germanic kingdoms, such as the Lom uh, Lombard kingdom or Longobard kingdom, uh, the Frankish kingdom, the Alemannic kingdoms that would eventually found Switzerland, the Bavarian kingdoms, um, and even the Anglo-Saxon kingdoms uh, only punished abortion in the case of violence, whether it be violence between two men that results in the abortion or the miscarriage of uh, the fetus as seen in Exodus uh, or, you know, domestic abuse or what have you. Otherwise, it was perfectly acceptable. Uh, in fact, in, in old English texts, such as uh, Leech Book, uh, Bald's Leech Book Volume 3, <clears throat> that you can pause here to read, uh, there is a section called The Formation of the Fetus, uh, where it describes that essentially the soul of the fetus did not uh so, sorry the soul did not enter the fetus until the fourth month uh which means the fetus was not technically alive until the fourth month um now of course there were variations on this uh but eventually this would sort of evolve into common law that i'll get into later in the video uh that involves um the subject of the quickening or when you feel the baby move 
okay, so we've covered Europe. We've covered both ancient Europe and medieval Europe. And um, as far as we can see, uh, not only was abortion for the most part uh, accepted, and it may not necessarily morally seen as morally good, but accepted um, and not illegal, uh, they believed that the fetus uh, was not, or at least in the case of the Anglo-Saxons, they believed that the fetus was not alive until, technically alive until four months when the soul entered the body. But what about the rest of the world? What does the rest of the world have to say? Well, we have uh, two good examples uh, in Asia. Uh, the, Ch the Imperial China, uh, for the most part, was a little bit on the fence, um, going as far back as uh, the Han Dynasty and the uh, Northern Wei Dynasty uh, and Three Kingdoms period and such. Um, Confucianism generally allowed, at least to a point, abortion, uh, generally, if it, but only if it was, uh, you know, for the safety of the mother. Uh, or you know, in the case of uh, in the case of um, several empresses in the Qing Dynasty, uh, if they didn't want their concubines uh, to uh, essentially have children over them, uh, which is actually similarly enough a practice um, that was uh, some something that was practiced by Empress Theodore of the Byzantine Empire. So we know it was common practice amongst royalty. <clears throat> However. Um, Buddhism saw, much like the Zoroastrians, saw the extermination of uh, a fetus as destroying life, as life was, all life was sacred. But in contrast, the Confucians, while I just said that they were somewhat more accepting, they discouraged it too because family was important. Uh, on the other hand, though, there still was a massive debate. In fact, there were Confucian scholars who were writing texts talking about how allowing um, an unwanted child to be born rather than giving the abortificant, um, you know, the thing that helps with abortion, to the woman actually harms two lives rather than just the one. So it's more moral uh, in that case for them to uh, give the drug that allows the abortion to the woman. Um, but of course, you know, the fact that that statement had to be made at all shows that the general consensus was that abortion was not something that should be done, except in the case of, you know, the aforementioned health of the mother. Uh, but at the same time, the case of that uh, poem shows that um, people were doing it and not necessarily being ostracized, at least that much, uh, within the Confucian sphere. Um, so, but in, in Japan, um, things were both the same and different, uh, depending on the time period. So in uh, Japan during, say, the Sengoku era, or the Azuchi uh, Momoyama era, I'm sure I butchered that, <laughs> uh, Abortion and infanticide was uh, similar to China, you know, considered for the most part acceptable, not necessarily morally right, but, you know, it was acceptable in a lot of things, um, as always, and I'm, you know, I've brought this up multiple times, but, you know, the health of the mother, um, and also unwanted children and things like that, and in fact, interestingly, uh, twins were the most common things that would that 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 would happen to, because twins were, for whatever reason, at least in some parts of Japan, viewed as a woman had had a had an affair rather than having one child, uh, so they were more likely to be killed. Um, but uh, despite this. Uh, eventually, the idea and the acceptance of infanticide, abortion, etc., uh, would begin to change with the rise of Imperial Japan that you see over here on the right. And the reason for that is because um, Imperial Japan, wanting to expand, um, as it eventually did, needed, it felt they needed a rise in population. And so they outlawed abortion in order to um, artificially uh, start this population growth uh, in order to become a major world power. So uh, as we see in Asia, uh, abortion was a bit of a, you know, on the fence topic where it was 
uh, viewed as morally wrong, but it could, was done with little to no really uh, backlash. I mean, there was, you know, wagging of fingers and, and such and philosophical debates, uh, especially between Confucians and uh, Buddhists and also in the case of Japan, Shintoists, uh, Shintoists uh, people who practice Shinto and Buddhists, etc. Um, but it was, for the most part, accepted until the rise of, say, Imperial Japan, in which case, uh, in the case of Japan, population was, uh, population rise was put at the most, utmost most importance. <clears throat> okay, so now we've looked at Europe and Asia, and, you know, we see generally similar trends, uh, and also the Middle East, uh, similar trends uh, with some various differences uh, in, you know, the case of violence uh, in uh, Europe and the Middle East, whereas morality depended on religion uh, in East Asia. Well, what about the Americas? Well, uh, for the most part, uh, in the Americas, abortion was uh, very acceptable. Um, in fact, uh, some of the most common abortifacants that were mentioned in early European texts, uh, colonial European texts that were used by tribes of North America uh, were things such as red cedar uh, and black root uh, that uh, were apparently very effective and were eventually adopted by colonial Europeans. Uh, and a lot of this has to do with the fact that by and far uh, most um, Indigenous, uh, sorry, indigenous American tribes are matrilineal in um, nature. That is, the lineage is traced from the mothers, and they are also, by and large, um, had uh, egalitarian cultures as well, where women and men were um, equal, and women often could hold property and uh, hold political power and such. Um, of course, you know, there were exceptions to the rule, as always, uh, but, we, you know, we'll get to those in a minute, but um, generally, the uh, colonists eventually adopted these um, abortifacants because they worked so well. Um, however, the, uh, as you go further south, <clears throat> uh, you get into the Aztec and the Inca empires, uh, and again, this is where you get to see uh, sim you see similar ideas to what is in uh, Europe and the Middle East, because in the Aztec Empire, um, in the Inca Empire, or the Triple Alliance in uh, Tusinti Suyu, as they're more properly known, um, abortion was only acceptable in the case of, you know, whether or not it was going to harm the mother and was generally looked down upon. But uh, as in cases like uh, the Inca Empire and in China and such, often uh, noble women and, and such would not want children or would not want, you know, rivals to have their children, have children, etc. And so they would pay off midwives to give abortions. And generally, there wasn't much backlash for that. <clears throat> uh, so now we get on to the big issue. <clears throat> So the big issue with the Americas is, you know, stated by people in the U.S. government is the U.S. Uh, and the Americas do not have um, a history of abortion. Um, and that is just not true. For one thing, the use, like I said, with, you know, the red cedar and black root, the uh, American colonies actually did use abortions. Um, and what this had to do with was the... Puritan and Calvinist and etc. idea, Christian idea, that a fetus is not alive until the quickening happens. And what the quickening is, is when you begin to feel the baby move within your body. So therefore, so long as the abortions are done before the quickening, uh, which, you know, can vary depending on what you want to look like, but if you look at, you know, the Le uh, Bald's Leech book, uh, volume three, um, you can expect it to be around the third or the fourth month. So, so long as it's before the third or the fourth month, it's okay. Um, so, and the, and the idea of British common law, which is where this comes from, uh, was actually continued to be used by uh, the American, early American uh, government 
uh, and nation uh, until about the 1800s, 1820s, give or take. Um, but did the founding fathers uh, believe in abortion? That's another question that you know goes along with the Constitution. Is if it's if we have no um, history of abortion in the U.S., uh, then surely the founding fathers were against it. <laughs> Actually, far from the truth, at least in the case of this individual, Benjamin Franklin. See, Benjamin Franklin here, uh, and when he uh, helped co-author a textbook, um, in his copy of the textbook, and his edition of the textbook, he added uh, the young man's um, almanac uh, to it, you know, farming almanac and such that involved various um, medicinal uh, recipes. And in it, uh, you can pause to read here, is a recipe called, uh, there's a recipe for uh, <laughs> suppressing of the courses, uh, which is especially a complaint among uh, unmarried women. So essentially what this means is this is a recipe for abortion that is specifically meant for unmarried women. And it mentions things like um, bellyache root, uh, uh, penny roll water, uh, spirits, etc. So, yeah, <laughs> the the founding fathers, at least in the case of Benjamin Franklin, were perfectly okay with abortion, especially for unmarried women, uh, and especially according to common law, where it had to be before the quickening. So, I mean, I don't know what more to tell you. Uh, in that case. So here we have it. We've looked at uh, the ancient world um, with, you know, the ancient uh, Western world, I should be calling it, uh, with ancient Rome and Persia and Babylon and such. And with the exception of Persia and Assyria, abortion was acceptable so long as it wasn't a violent abortion. Uh, and it was, you know, in cases uh, of, you know, the health of the mother, or it was discussed by the parents, or in Greek cases, it was unwanted by the husband. And in Imperial China, very similarly, uh, you know, for the safety of the mother, Imperial China and Japan, for the safety of the mother, uh, you know, unwanted by the husband, what have you, but it was also uh, morally debated um, by Confucians and Buddhists and such uh, for centuries until the rise of Imperial Japan uh, decided to do away with abortion, at least within Japan. Um, and then, of course, we see in the Americas, in the Americas, with the exception of the Inca um, and Aztec Empire, maybe a few more, um, abortion was perfectly acceptable. Uh, and even in the Inca and Aztec Empire, the uh, ever present in the case of the whether or not it's for the health of the mother. Uh, and then finally, of course, the Americas, where we see very clearly that well into the 1820s, abortion was okay before the quickening and founding fathers actually published abortion recipes. So abortion is very historical and is very widespread. And of course, not every belief is one to one or necessarily the same, but it has always existed and has definitely always existed within the US. So <clears throat> I'm sure this is gonna be yet another uh, very controversial video, um, you know, uh, and uh, while I personally, you know, wouldn't make anyone in my family get an abortion, I'm, you know, all for, you know, the woman's choice, especially in health, so, it's a very important that the history of it uh, and facts are brought forward. So again, you know, bring on the controversy. I'm here to teach facts, especially facts involving the safety of women um, and women in my family. So with that, um, I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, if you wanna see me cover any other topics, controversial otherwise, uh, feel free to comment and don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And I hope you all have a good day.